The one that covers. The parasite that lives on the surface of the skull's bodies is what gives them their power. Similar to my children who live in my skin. I modify the parasites I isolated from the body of that old man, differentiating them with various abilities. One that can blend perfectly into its surroundings by exposing the pigments in its cells at will. Another that, by harboring multiple species of metallic archaea, can oxidize and reduce metal. Isolating the one that covers and transplanting it into an artificial medium should provide the same abilities as the skulls, but they can only subsist within a human body. Once transplanted into the medium, they will eventually die. Another thing, the weakness of the one that covers is desiccation. Their surface moisture loss is greater than ours. The reason they give off mist is to alleviate this by releasing the salts inside them as microparticles. Water vapor condenses around them, appearing as mist. But this dries out the atmosphere until they cannot even produce mist. And once their supply of water from the host runs out, the parasites are in danger. They, along with their host, enter a form of suspended animation. However, a similar effect occurs if they come into contact with a large amount of water. Rain, for instance. The one that covers will temporarily abandon other processes in his eagerness to absorb the water. Pittiholone. Make the weather your ally. Boss, about that AI pod you retrieved from Emmerich's research facility. Guess what we found inside? A corpse. Human. The pod maintained a low internal temperature the whole time, and very little outside air got in. That would have slowed down decomposition. Still, the remains were mostly skeletal. Estimated time of death is between six months and a year ago. We put the screws to Huey about it. Listen to the tape. Turns out it was the body of someone we knew very well. Fine. Yes, Strangelove was doing AI research in that lab. Why hide that until now? Why? Okay, so what? I, I wasn't working alone. You've got to understand. You do understand, right? I, I didn't want to drag her into this. It's my load to bear, alone. So you didn't create the AI intended to drive Sahelanthropus. It was strange, love. Skullface was never in favor of AI control. So naturally, they argued. Strange love, she, she, she got him angry, and then he killed her. How? You didn't see it? So you found her inside that pot after the fact. And you just left her body to rot in there. Or perhaps you put her in there afterward. I, I, I asked him not to take her away from me. So she was killed by Skullface, but you asked nicely, and he put her body in the AI pod for you. That's right. Pathetic. You know, we have another idea. That you killed her. What, me? Oh, I couldn't kill her. You killed her and locked her body in the pod. I wouldn't. D don't treat me like one of you. I, I can't just kill anyone whenever I feel like it. I'm a, a, a normal human being. Oh, I see. So you just shut her inside and waited for her to die. I would never do that. What, you mean she killed herself? Yes. She, she climbed inside that pod and shut the door. It, it can't be opened from the outside. It, it was suicide. Mm. Suicide, I said. She killed herself. She got in when I wasn't looking and, and suffocated. She'd often try to do things like that. Uh, by the time I realized and opened the door, she wasn't breathing. 
I, I got scared and shut the pod again. I couldn't bring myself to open it back up. That's right. Me? Kill her? What, what is wrong with you? I see. Just tell me one more thing. Haven't you gotten enough today? Okay, okay, I see it's a painful memory. You don't have to answer, just listen to the question. <sighs> you see, we examined her remains. She had a scar on her lower abdomen, a surgical scar. It had been stitched up and had fully healed, meaning it was long before her death. She had a child, didn't she? Uh, I, I... Your child. Where's the kid? How should I know? So there is a child. I've never seen his face. What do you take us for? They took it all. Even my child. I didn't even know he'd been born. I, I lost everything. How old would he be? It's four years since then. And you know it's a boy. Strange love said so. And his name? We called him Hal, even though I never saw his face. Five-star restaurant, but the kitchen's used to serving a lot of different appetites. Hamburgers. Uh, hamburgers? Even we, Dine, have become Americanized. I eat them often back home. <laughs> and you just can't let them go. Well, as far as symbols of the American Empire go, hamburgers are pretty good. The victory of capitalism. Hmm. Your people suffered so much at the hands of America. And you asked for hamburgers. We have suffered more than you can know. But I do not see hamburgers as an accomplice. A single dish, providing a balanced helping of nature's blessings. Meat, grain, and vegetable. How could anyone hate such a magnificent thing? Says the guy who can survive on photosynthesis. Balance has nothing to do with it. You just like a good burger. That is also true. Be warned, though. I have very high standards. 
Don't worry. I do too. All right, then. My good old-fashioned all-American icon coming up. <laughs> I look forward to it. Oh, Snake! What is it, Snake? He's Nook. He is so cute. I haven't seen him around lately. Where did he get to? He is the official mascot of Mother Base, so he should show his face a little more. Want to know a secret? I saw Miller feeding Nook when no one was looking. Meow meow. Come here. Come here, kitty kitty. Come here. Nook? Nook! Oh, my head! It hurts! The whole base is busy getting ready for peace day. Miller has finished writing his song, so I went with Professor Galvez to listen to it. Miller was really into it, humming away as he played the song on his acoustic guitar. But the song melody did not match up with the guitar chords at all, and it sounded more like a mess than music. Miller's very enthusiastic, but I think he's tone deaf. I guess the guitar backing sounded good at least. But as I was wondering how to break it to Miller, Professor Galvez took out an odd instrument. It was just two antennas sticking out of a box. More like a radio than a musical instrument. He said it was invented by the Soviets. Roger. What is Professor Galvez on a Soviet Russian instrument? I asked him, and he told me music has no borders. Well, I cannot argue with that. Good music is something people of any nation can appreciate. Why not abandon war and just make music together? But anyway, the professor offered to try playing the melody on his instrument in time with Miller's guitar. It was like something from another world. But somehow, it fit Miller's guitar back in really well. It even gave the song a charming down-home kind of feeling. Miller was overjoyed. That is it. That is my melody right there, he said. It sounded totally different from when he sang it. But hearing the professor's version, I thought I could probably sing it. Then Miller hit me with the next bombshell. Buzz, you write the lyrics. I did not know whether to scream or to run out of the room. There was only one week left until peace day. The mission. Boss, research materials have been stolen from Code Talker's mansion. The materials were packed into two containers and hidden in the jungle southwest of the mansion. You have to recover those containers. The pickup crew coming for those documents is none other than XOF. That's right. They're still active, even after Skullface's death. Now that he's no longer in charge, their original chain of command has been restored. Meaning if XOF gets those documents, Code Talker's research ends up in Cypher's hands. According to Code Talker, the research papers stored in that mansion account for over 50 years of study. The problem is the vocal cord parasites. If the papers documenting that research fall into Cypher's hands, they'll take another long, hard look at them. The ethnic cleansers we thought were history will become a reality. America, Zero, will have a weapon far more powerful than any nuke. Even worse, if this knowledge were to leak, the world... Humanity can't be entrusted with this kind of power. Recover the containers before the enemy extraction choppers arrive. Boss, Code Talker's research has been stolen. The research materials have been packed into two containers and hidden Some in the jungle southwest of the mansion. Enemy extraction choppers will be there any minute. You have to find and retrieve those containers before they arrive. That area is being guarded by Zero Wisdom Security, and the client is XOF. If the choppers make off with the containers, 
that research will end up in Cypher's hands. That cannot be allowed to happen. One other thing, boss. We need a cargo-capable Fulton extraction device to recover the containers. Use your iDroid to order its development and have it dropped in. Be careful down there, boss! The map has been updated. There's something I've been wondering. Why are you called Code Talker? During World War II, the U.S. military used the languages of different tribes, including the Navajo, as codes, right? I know the term Code Talker was used to mean people sent to the battlefield to speak in those codes. Boss, looks like they're stepping up security around the targets. Watch yourself. But I did not go. I was already over the conscription age. However... I was made to help craft the codes that were spoken. So in a wider sense, you could call me a code talker for that. Navajo is a complex language. And virtually no one outside the U.S. speaks it. Guards, they must know where the containers are. If you can just squeeze it out of them. Yeah, in the end, the Japanese never cracked it. The cipher is king in information warfare. Of course, they didn't simply speak in Navajo. They created substitutions for words according this to... This ability in the jungle isn't great. Watch out. You could run into the enemy at any time. Feel. Feel the roots. The branches. Become one with the forest. The forest is aware of the enemy's noise. You must be too. Life is breathed into them. They become a part of the listener. Our words were transformed into lifeless ciphers and used for war. This, after the Black Anna, spent generations suppressing the language. Yeah, I'm sorry. So I guess we shouldn't be calling you Code Talker, huh? No, I do not mind. The reason Skullface called me Code Talker was because I also am responsible for coding language into the vocal cord parasites. I am the same as those young warriors, used for a cipher's sake. I must never forget that. The name... Our early warning radar still hasn't picked up the enemy choppers. But it's only a matter of time before they arrive. You said Skullface ordered you to weaponize the vocal cord parasites. But you also said he wasn't the reason. And he wasn't. I was seduced by the parasites. That is a fact. <laughs> How? Target extraction confirmed. That leaves one target to go. Take care of the next one. Boss, our early warning radar just picked up the enemy choppers. We'll keep you informed of their ETA. Hurry up and extract the target. You can't go firing on the XOF choppers. If we attack XOF now, it'll be a declaration of war against Cypher itself. That time will come, but it's not now. George. This was the name my teacher gave me. I was forced to give up my Dine name. Forbidden from speaking anything but English. If we dared utter a word of filthy Navajo, the teacher made us eat a bar of soap. Yeah. That was the U.S. government's education policy for Native Americans. To erase our words was like erasing our people. Their education was tantamount to ethnic cleansing. Over time, the overt persecution of our language stopped. But to this day, it continues to be eaten away by the lingua franca, that is English. Many of the Diné outside the reservations can speak nothing else. And it isn't just our language. Across the world, minority languages are being destroyed by dominant languages. Many are on the verge of extinction. Hmm. Enter the vocal cord parasites. Yes, I began thinking that minority languages needed some sort of deterrent against dominant languages. The only that they, that their peoples and cultures would survive. 
It was then that I came across literature at the foundation claiming that man acquired language thanks to a type of parasite. One that distinguishes between languages. You gotta extract him. Boss, you don't have much time. Move it! Make it more pathogenic. I would have my deterrent against English. But I failed to hide that aim from Scarface. He noticed. Yes. I wanted to retaliate against the English language. Though never did I intend to actually use it as he planned. You know how the story ends. I was forced to study how to make the parasites compatible with all the world's languages. All but English. However, he in fact secretly isolated an English strain. I will not be held prisoner by the man's family. The English strain must not be allowed to exist either. Target extraction confirmed. Time to go. Boss, we got Code Talker's research materials back in one piece. The medical team has them under lock and key in the quarantine facility. The materials should help their research into the vocal cord parasites. Cypher won't be getting their hands on them now. Side ops Boss, list updated. The mission list. Mission we list some new updated. Job offers. The details are on your iDroid. Boss, some of the kids we've been keeping here have escaped. We don't know why they ran off, but it may have something to do with Ralph's death. The intel team's looking for them as we speak. I'll add information to your side ops list as it comes in. You need to locate and secure those kids. I'll try to find out what happened. Ralph, that kid who died in the accident, a burial at sea. The man in charge of that facility has been severely punished. But ever since, the kids have been acting strange. It's obvious they've lost their trust in adults. I was getting reports of them ignoring the staff, or getting insolent, and even violent. And a few days later, several of the kids did a disappearing act. They snuck into choppers and shipping containers and got off base. Why? Your guess is as good as mine. These kids were born in a war zone, and forced to grow up as war fighters. If they're left alone, war is how they'll die. But I thought we showed them there are other reasons to live. I never liked having children on Mother Base. But the thought of them going back to the battlefield and picking up their old lifestyle is something I can't stomach. It makes me think of Chico, nine years ago. We have to get those kids back. Hell, they know too much about our operation. I never expected even the kids to betray us. Boss, retrieve the film canister our informant hid in Spoogmade Keep before he died. It contains vital information on Skullface's plan. For now, our only clue is the garbled photograph the informant tried to send us before the end. We're working on analyzing the data, but there's no time to wait. A KGB Spetsnaz squad is after the target as well. Boss, go to Spook May Keep and use the VI to lead you to where the film canister is hidden. It is paramount you retrieve the target before the enemy does. Presence detected. The map has been updated. Detected. The map has been updated.
your objective. Now get out of the hot zone. Mission info has been updated. A Soviet soldier. A lot of them came from Central Asia Enemy before, but lately detected. they've been using more and more has Russians. Been updated. Simple, really. There's A ruler's greatest wealth is not money or land. It is the number of individuals under his control. Clouds approaching. Subjects who work, consume, are there to be used as pawns in war. For a capitalist ruler, his people's power becomes his power. You are the same with your diamond dogs. Extraction you spin it with your speeches. Metabase. Subject on board. Leave the rest to us. As much talent as you can into your little domain. Every person another feather in your cap. Yes. Since ancient times, every civilization's ruler has had the same idea. When people unite under one will, they become stronger than the sum of their parts. And the one will is the ruler's will. And what do rulers use to bring people together? Language. In the Old Testament, it is written that only one language was spoken in Eden. A shared tongue that united all of humanity. Mankind eventually grew aware of its power and harnessed that strength to build a tower to the heavens. The mighty Tower of Babel. This angered God, who splintered the language of man, and the tower was never completed. Languages emerged, and the earth was divided as men went their separate ways. Every age is the same. A ruler's first order of business, after conquering new land, is to force his tongue on its people. Ancient Rome, Napoleon, and now Zero. English is wrecking havoc around the world right now. The British Empire tilled the land with war as its hoe, then began planting the seed that is English. Eventually, American capitalism became the new instrument. To play its game of wealth, you only had to abide by one rule, English. By exploiting people's desires, English has become a leash that people gladly wear around their necks, it would seem. Exfiltrated hot it. zone. You've made it out of the hot zone. No sign of the enemy. Mission complete, boss. Boss, I have a quick report for you here. We've discovered a radiation leak in the laboratory on the quarantine platform. It's coming from testing equipment we installed the other day. Members of the medical team have been conducting research there, but we'll evacuate them all from the research block to the containment block next to it. Emmerich. There's no need to worry. No radioactive material is leaked, so the contamination won't spread. We just need to seal off the testing equipment. I've dispatched the security team to get the researchers out. I'll keep you updated. We finished decoding the informant's report. That floating kid we've run into a few times now. Looks like he was a test subject in clinical experiments. The Soviets called him the third boy. The third boy was brought to a lab on the outskirts of Moscow from Czechoslovakia, after which he was due to be sent to a research center in Leningrad, then Siberia, and finally an academic town in Novosibirsk. It doesn't appear that the researchers witnessed the talents we've seen from him, but nevertheless, he was quite the popular subject. His latent cognitive abilities suddenly awoke en route to Moscow. According to the report, the third boy was easily influenced by other individuals' biofields. Evil thoughts, in particular. They affected his mind like a virus. Extreme anger or resentment, motives for revenge, in other words. Now, during the transport flight to Moscow, the boy was exposed to a powerful mental energy field coming from a certain individual. Ever since, being conscious of his powers, he's become a sort of energy generator. 
What's unique about him is the way his acute telepathic abilities get taken over by another person's will. The boy began to physically parasitize individuals experiencing extreme anger and codify the host's desires. This includes amplifying the host's natural strengths. Or, in accordance with the host's desires, he can also implant program code in another individual, making them a puppet, essentially. Human neural synapses transmit weak electrical currents between neurons. These electrical currents, though at a level difficult to observe, warp the magnetic field outside the body. The third boy is able to pick up these weak fluctuations. Contrary to psychotronics, which involves controlling the human mind, his abilities as a receptor are too high. The emotions he picks up from another individual are amplified and unleashed into his body as they recur in his brain. They turn into microwaves, which then affect the physical world, triggering paranormal phenomena like the spontaneous combustion of organic matter or a psychokinesis, you know, moving an object without touching it. There's one other thing. While he's parasitizing a host, the boy's ego gets shut away, allowing the will of the host to take control of his powers, like some annoying static drowning out your own voice. That means he isn't responsible for what's been happening. Somebody's extreme anger has manifested through the third boy's powers in ways none of us could have predicted, which would mean this was going on somewhere around us. Looking back on it, a lot of things make sense now. The man on fire, Sahelanthropus, they both came to life thanks to the third boy's powers. Everything has been happening through him as a catalyst. We first saw him in the hospital on Cyprus. That's the target. The man on fire's desire for revenge gave him his new abilities in return. He next appeared at the Hamid Fighters Fort where the honeybee was hidden. There, the boy parasitized Skullface's vengeful mind. He controlled Sahelanthropus, making it do whatever Skullface wanted. Enemy Same goes for when we extracted Emmerich onto the chopper. When he appeared at the Devil's House in Central Africa, Analysis Skullface's complete. will controlled the man Analysis on fire complete. via the third boy's powers. Everything is clear up to this point. But even the informant couldn't pinpoint who the host was in the cave within Serac power plant. Sahelanthropus suddenly became active, then crushed not only the man on fire, but Skullface as well. Surely neither of them could have been the host. Who else was at that location and bore anger more extreme than either of them? Whose will was controlling Sahelanthropus? According to the report, emotions transmitted in children's brains affect the surrounding magnetic field more strongly. Cerebral nerves are covered with insulation called myelin sheaths to increase impulse speed. The reason for this leakage has to do with the fact that children's myelin sheaths are still developing. So, how many children do you remember being there? Children with a burning desire for revenge and bearing a grudge against you. I can think of only one. Eli. We don't know what kind of life he's had, but the resentment he's shown toward adults is nothing short of extraordinary. The third boy resonated with Eli's mind. In fact, he's coming too. Roger that. ...animosity of all individuals within the boy's reception range. a mile radius, beating out even Volgan and Skullface. You gotta extract him. He's probably remained hooked on Eli's anger since. Remember the Devil's House? The third boy showed an interest in Shivani? That must have been his ego making a rare appearance. Subject on board. Leave the rest to us. ...beyond anyone else in the world, but he's still a kid. Maybe them both being kids was enough to bring them together. And if so, maybe with Eli, he isn't feeding off him, but acting in symbiosis with him. You gotta extract him. So what kick-started the third boy's powers? If we look at the location and time that his plane went down, we can make a pretty good guess. When the plane experienced the first anomaly, it gave an accurate report of its position to a control tower. Due north of the Black Sea, 125 miles east of Kiev. And the Roger. Black Sea is Cyprus's green line. So the plane's position was directly north of the hospital where you'd been asleep for nine years. And this anomaly was reported at exactly the same time that you woke up. The plane was enveloped in flame from the inside out. 
The fuselage burnt to ashes. There were no survivors, at least not publicly admitted. Your thoughts formed a synchronicity with the boy's psyche and were amplified inside his brain. That would have been more than enough to trigger his abilities. Your rage was like a big bang in his head, blowing the lid off his powers. The boy was then secretly moved to the lab outside of Moscow where Volgan was comatose. There, Volgan's thoughts resonated with the boy and he was awakened. Volgan became the man on fire, hell-bent on getting revenge on you. His instincts led him straight to you. Skullface knew Volgan from Operation Snake Eater, or perhaps from even before. Monitoring this pair of extraordinaries, he discovered the hospital and sent his assassin and XOF. Skullface was probably watching the situation from close by. Then, realizing how useful these two test subjects could be, he approached them. Reacting to Skullface's thirst for revenge, this time the boy let Skullface's will control Volgan. Volgan, at times driven by personal revenge, at times through Skullface's will, kept on moving, though his body was little more than dead meat. Perhaps there were moments where even your thoughts affected him as well. But without the boy's power, it was like the plug had been pulled from the socket. Everything was powered by anger, malice, revenge. This is how the end of the report sums things up. Both the third boy and the man on fire were originally test subjects of paranormal research for military applications, like telekinetically controlling the leader of an enemy nation and making him launch a nuke, or stopping the heart of someone on the wrong side of the Berlin Wall, experimenting with latent human abilities. They were used as tools of the Cold War. The boy's only crime was being born with unique gifts. But he was sacrificed on the altar of war. His life reduced to slavery under other people's wills. Turned into a living weapon with no will of his own. Eventually, the only emotion he could feel must have been the desire to get revenge for the hand he'd been dealt. Boss, it's you that awakened the boy's powers. But there's more to it than that. I guess the anger emanating from you was something he could truly relate to.